The central bank of Nigeria, CBN, has reported a significant increase in foreign exchange inflow into the economy in February this year. The increase is attributed to substantial remittance payment by Nigerians overseas and purchases of now asset by foreign portfolio investors. The Apex Bank's acting director of corporate communications, Mrs. Hakama Sidi Ali, made this note in a statement made available to amusement. Now, Sidi noted that the bank's data indicates that overseas remittances rose to 1.3 billion US dollars in February, more than four times US $300 million received in January. She added that foreign investors purchased more than $1 billion of Nigerian assets last month, with total portfolio flows of at least 2.3 billion US dollars. We call it FOSFA in 2024, compared to $3.9 billion seen in total for last year. According to see the higher FX inflows continued in March 2024, driven by increased investor interest in short-term sovereign debt, following the recent adjustment to benchmark interest rates. Meanwhile, international business research firm Economics Intelligence Unit has said that the Central Bank of Nigeria does not have the liquidity to support the Naira as of now. It stated this in its latest country report on Nigeria, which was published on Friday. We will stay on the Forex issue on this edition of the show. Welcome to Business Insight on Plus TV Africa, as we will also briefly address the issue of budget pardon allegations making the rounds. Welcome on board. I am Justin Akadoni. Welcome back. Away from that report, now let us talk about um, the forex crisis in the country and how we can actually uh, make it better, if I may say. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria says government securities issuance had been significantly oversubscribed, with foreign investors accounting for over 75% of bids received at the auctions conducted on March the 1st and 6th, 2024, and that inflows are improving. Now, let me bring in my guest now, international finance and economic analyst, Mokhtar Mohammed. Let me get his reactions to this development. Good morning to you, Mokhtar. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right. Let me start this way. Uh, <laughs> the seemingly oversubscription of government securities by about 75% by foreign investors what significance does it really have, or is it really having, on our forex regime and the Naira? Is this what uh, some sort of panacea that we're supposed to get or see, or I don't know? What are your thoughts, really? I think it's good news for us. Um, our reserves have today report shows that our reserves have gone up by 2.83%. Uh, which is good. Uh, we are beginning to earn inflows of uh, earn about 2.8 um, billion dollars in terms of inflows. For me, that also is good. Uh, we, so now, why are investors coming? Why are they over subscribing the the bond market? You remember that um, inflation is low in the developed economy of the world now, and so the the, the return on investment is uh, is is low. And so they are looking for other investments, other place to invest. And now we are giving a high interest rate, like you said, government security is giving up almost 22% in terms of uh, interest rate. So definitely, um, it looks like a good place for foreign investors to want to come in. But it's the foreign portfolio investors that are only just coming in, what I call for the hot money. Um, but now we need the hot money to stabilize our FX rate. And again, why they are coming now, they now also strongly believe that the Naira is on, uh, on the value. So if they are able to get it at the rates, they are coming in at a higher rate, they will be exiting at a lower rate, which also will also improve um, their own profit uh, margin. I think that's why we are seeing that. So hopefully we might be seeing a lot of these foreign investors coming into the country. Understand you. You're saying that um, really there is an indication of interest in our short term security debt, or is there something else that we are not seeing? Or is it just because of our, the undervalue of the Naira, or they are seemingly interested in our interest uh, security debt? Really? No. 
No, I think uh, when you look at investors are not looking at the long term interest when they are coming okay. to your country. They are looking at the short time or how much they can make in the, pos uh, the shortest possible time. And uh, like I said, what they cannot get outside the shore of their country. Remember, the cost of funding in their country also is very cheap. They are borrowing less than maybe less than 10%, mm -hmm. and you are making about 22% here. And when you look at inflation in those places, inflation in those countries has uh, gotten like a 4%. So uh, those variables in foreign land, when you make a, a return of 10 to 15% in, in your investment, it's, it's a very good investment. So uh, basically, that is why they are coming in. Well, like I say, they are the portfolio investors, and they are, they are, mm -hmm. they are here for the short term. And um, it's now you able to balance up and make sure that as a fortune investor that end up becoming foreign direct in investor so it's up to you or how you you finally handle them to to, to turn to, to turn the corner my challenge in all of this is um if as they are bringing in the effect effects you must also be able to create a window for them to exit and mm -hmm. so and that's what um, the cba is not there because we don't have enough effects remember some uh, uh, um, investors have not been able to uh, uh, disregard their funds to their to their various con countries. So um, Nigeria is still not um, admitted into the frontier market, and I think um, if we are able to to, to to do what is right, we could see Nigeria coming back to the frontier market, and that also will bring in more more um, of these foreign investors into our country. Okay, let me try and put it differently. Um, let me just. Uh play devil's advocate now. But the Serbian governor, Olaya Mikadoso, had set out a detailed strategy to curb inflation, stabilize the exchange rate, and spur confidence in the banking system and the economy uh, using last month's Monetary Policy Committee meeting and a conference call with those are foreign portfolio investors that we have just mentioned. So would you say that these strategies are working, in your opinion, or is it too early to call? Too early to call, the, um, Justin, too early to call, but it's working. Uh, like I say, it's in the short term, uh, but it's too early to call. Um, we, we need, you see, they are coming in now. They have not complained about exiting. Like I said, if it becomes a challenge for them to exit the market, then yeah, uh, you, you know what I would do again for. But again, if a chance um they want to repatriate their money back and be able to repatriate it back for them at 20. remember the same cbn have told the oil major that you cannot repatriate 100 percent of your fund out you mm -hmm. can repatriate something you have to wait for three months now that also is not a good point out but if you, but he after i said that he met with the foreign investors more have assured them that their funds can go in and out and that is what because the whole idea of hiking rates was to attract um, these portfolio investors into our country with high returns mm -hmm. so that we can use it to stabilize the Naira. All right. Uh, the Naira is about, uh, let's say, the second worst performing currency in the world after the Lebanese uh, pound. Well, right now, international business research firm Economist Intelligence Unit is saying that the Central Bank of Nigeria does not have the liquidity enough to support the Naira as of now. Even with the similar good news that the CBN is making us believe, what do we make out of all of this, Mokhtar? Yeah, well, when they say we are the worst performing currency, <laughs> then again, we'll, we'll cap it up and say we are the best performing uh, 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 um, stock exchange in the world. So, Aha! Uh, this, you see that word there? All right. We're the worst performing... <laughs> <laughs> there was a time that we were the worst performing exchange. Today we are the best performing exchange. So hmm. believe strongly that the Naira is really undervalued. I believe strongly that we will get there and sooner than, than we think. Yes, you're talking about um, the, the, the our foreign reserve um, and the CBM. But um, David, it just tells you, I mean, the, sorry, Justin, it just tells you when you have a strategic government, then you're able to strategize and get things done and don't get into the kind of crisis we've gotten ourselves into. Look at Egypt. Egypt did the same thing we are doing now. They used to do a managed system, but they've moved to a floating system. And what did they do? They know that liquidity is the challenge. You don't leave your currency for market forces. So what they did, I mean, World Bank, you are the one telling us that we need to we need to float our currency. We need to attract investors. We need to do this. Our currency is not right. Mm -hmm. They said, we are going to do that. But in the interim, IMF, World Bank, you give us a loan facility of about 
eight billion dollars. And so IMF agreed. So immediately they flew the currency on day one. The currency lost 50 percent to or to to the dollar and the pounds. But two days later, because they have the liquidity to say no, this is the right value of what our currency will be. They, 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 the currency have just lost 30 percent mm. because they have liquidity, and then they are now attracting investors. Stories, stories are now coming in, and so by virtue of this now, it's not creating. Uh, 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 um, is not creating effects for them in the long run and stability to the borrowing form in the short term. So that is strategic thinking. You don't just wake up, oh, this is gone, this is that, and you don't have a strategy. Or you come up and tell us, oh, uh, during the change, we'll be giving them $20,000. Then the following day, you are suspending 1,430 bureau de change. See, today, your bureau de change that you approved to give thirty twenty thousand dollars every week at uh, at uh, one thousand three hundred, you've not done it, and the, the exchange rate that was stabilizing at one thousand four hundred, one thousand five hundred at the point one thousand three hundred, is now moving back to one thousand six hundred. So it just shows that we are not strategic in our thinking. So we need to be strategic, and that's why I use the Egyptian example. Okay. Okay, I still want us to just uh, examine the EIU report about uh, the forex situation in the country. Specifically, it is suggesting that um, the CBN resorts to foreign borrowing to support the Naira and fulfill its FX obligations. I want to find out what you reason about this economically, because when we talk about uh, borrowings, I just try to to be uh, a bit careful knowing how we do with our, uh, our borrowings in the country and obligations and repayment and all of that. But let me just understand what you make out of all of this borrowing in foreign uh, currency to support the CBN's move and, of course, uh, the FX of obligations. I said it before. I agree with that. I said if you want to stabilize FX, we need to think about how we can borrow. Now, borrowing, like you said, maybe too, we could, we could six years do borrow through a uh, euro bond and all that. But unfortunately, a lot of uh, com people will not invest in your euro bond when you don't have stability in your exchange rate. So they will need to know that um, your exchange is rightly priced. As like I said, it's undervalued or good, but that could also be an example for the, um, an incentive for them to come in because they know that they are coming in high and they may live in uh, uh, low. So I, I I think that's the right way to go because we don't have the stability. If you look at by and by what we're talking about, they're talking about the audited report of the CBN before now. We just when I did the report, we have less than three thousand three three billion dollars as a country in our foreign is that when you move out all of obligation. And so I totally agree that we should borrow, but I'm not the type of borrowing that we have done before which is uh, um, we just borrow for consumption we just borrow uh we borrow without a, a target i think this time we should borrow in the for the sake of reform we've already done that again with the um amazon bank africa is it um, african amazon bank in cairo but up to this moment the 3.3 billion has not had any impact it's stabilizing our currency that tells you that uh, we need to do more in terms of borrowing. so i totally agree with uh, us trying to borrow to stabilize our currency in the short term. But the challenge is that now, at the time we borrowed, we we're saying that uh, President Buhari, they have borrowed OM so much. But at the time they were borrowing, even foreign debt, the exchange was about 400 and uh, 360. And uh, by the time they are going, when the government has officially adjusted, they left the fleet for market forces, it has gone to 1,000 and 1,500. So our foreign debt has astronomically increased. So sure. it, the, the, the government will be in a dilemma. Do you want to continue to increase the, dub, the debt burden on yourself? I, I don't think it's one thing the government will want to do. So um, it's a good thing to do, but the government will need to be strategic so that they don't have too much debt obligation. All right, Mokta, let's leave the Forex issue and talk um, a bit of political economics, uh, if we may. Let's just leave Forex for, for a bit now. What is in the news right now is the issue of uh, budget padding allegations here and there about um, 3 trillion naira in the 2024 budget. Mokta, we've talked about budget over the years in the country. Right now, it is resurfacing. So right now, should this allegation be anything to go by? That's on the one hand. And what are the implications if truly we are uh, implementing a budget that is padded? What does it really mean economically? Economically, it's not good. That means you have a budget deficit will go up. 
Um, again, that means a lot of funds are not in the creative, productive sector of the Nigerian economy. And that's why we are suffering the kind of inflation we are suffering now. And because of the, about 30 trillion that was printed into the ways and the means. So when you have a budget like that, which provision were not made, that means it was made for consumption or corrupt tendency. It tends to have an inflationary pressure on the economy and then high uh, interest rate, high inflationary pressure, low ability for the citizen to end, uh, to be able to earn more and, and the opportunity power would have gone up drastically. So I think the government should be, luckily the presidency have come out and said there's nothing like that. But again, coming from a senator, he gave a lot of details. So we still need to hear more from the president. But my only challenge in all of this is that it's targeting at a particular region, trying to make it feel that a particular region is being, uh, is being, uh, um, not run in the scheme of things. I don't think that is, is good for the senator to be saying that. But if he's saying that if a lot of budget budgeting are based on based on project issue, name those projects. Shouldn't be saying we are discussing with the president. We've had consultant to allies. So you should have waited for your consultant to have come up with the result before you come to the press. So for me, I think um, everything in this country is is becoming political. Even the economy is becoming political. Even in funeral service, you saw what happened in, in the funeral service of uh, the late um, CC of assets holding, where it became a political uh, uh, um, um, talk between uh, the, the Senate president and the governor of River State. So we tend to politicize everything that has to do with us. I don't think it's uh, we're talking about the economy here. We're talking about the livelihood of, of, of Niger for of Nigerians. We've seen hunger in the land, and it is not looking at well, only APC members are feeling hunger, only PDP. It's affecting everybody. So economically. One thing you must give it to the developed economy, especially the United States. They don't play politics with security. They don't play politics with the economy because that has no face. It attacks everybody and it doesn't know the rich. It doesn't know the poor. It doesn't know the middle class. It just comes in and then it's, 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 it's attacked. So I think, um, the, 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 the uh, um, Senator Nengi should come out clear with precise information and the presidency also should come out clear in terms of defending themselves with also precise information for us to, to guide us. Right, thank you, Mokta. Indeed, you mentioned about economic hardship and um, hunger in the land. How have you been surviving? You know, the price of Gary and, of course, um, being skyrocketed by the day. Can you give us some survival mechanisms that you have been using? Uh, David, uh, it's just, I don't know why I'm calling you David today. <laughs> just it. I think the survival mechanism is budgeting. Mm. Essentially speaking, let's be real. Yeah. You need to, we need to start living our life by budgeting. What you don't need, you don't need. You take away your want and deal with your need it's in tough times like this. Uh, we need to begin to think of budgeting. You don't just spend based on impulse. For me, that's the key driver of why I see, um, smiling today because I tend to make sure that, uh, you make sure that there are some things that I need, that there are things that I want. Your need is, uh, uh, in terms of you need a house, you have to pay your house rent, you have to pay your children's school fees, those are need. Your children have to wear clothes, those are need. But, uh, other, even in terms of moving out, you want to go out, the cost of energy is high, so you need to, you need to say, okay, fine. Uh, is it what me walking from home or going out? And if I want to go out, will I drive or is it cheaper for me to enter public transport? Yeah. Thank God we have BRT, we have the, 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 the red line and the blue line uh, metro system coming into play. So all those things are things that you need to consider. But it starts from, right. first of all, by budgeting. Uh, you and I have that experience. Remember when I had to come to your studio, we have to work it out. So, yeah. so <laughs> these are part of things like right. that to do with yeah. <laughs> budgeting. So you need to start. Um, the only strategy to survive at the yeah. time like this is take right. your budgeting very serious. Know what goes out, know what comes in. Make that your budget look at am I are there loophole? Are there are there leakages that I need to 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 control? Do okay. I have to get data to make a call to Justin than using my direct phone line to call? So those are little little things, but the by the time you calculate it, uh, just before you go, let me give you an example. Since these issues of fuel price um like have come in, I have not bought um, gas in any other station than NMPC uh -huh. because by buying in NMPC, I'm saving myself almost like 30 naira. Mm. So, and it doesn't look much, but in a week, it doesn't look much, but in a month, it, 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 it begins to grow, and in a year, at all. So, budgeting is key. All right.
All right, thank you so much. Now, we now know how to budget, uh, you know, for our daily expenses of personal financing and budgeting comes to play. Thank you so much, Mukta Mohammed, International Finance and Economic Analyst, for all of your useful insights, specifically concerning the, you know, Gary and Bins and the budget. We do appreciate your time. Thank you, Justin, for having me. Always a pleasure to be on your program. Thank you. All right, that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadone. Many thanks for being there. Bye for now.